Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Italianate Victorian. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right because I did Google it, but as always, you can leave your suggestions, corrections, and questions in the comments down below throughout the course of this video. Thanks to its fairly simple design, the Italianate has been able to be adapted to anything from a middle-class row home all the way up to sprawling mansions on massive estates. Contrary to more ornate designs like Gothic Revival, Second Empire, or Queen Anne, there are very few bay windows and sort of bump outs in this build style. Of course there are a few and you may come across the occasional tower, but for the most part you're going to be dealing with a lot of right angles, which is what makes this build so simple and easy to pull off, as well as scale uh, to be both larger and smaller. The Italianate will pretty much always be at least two stories, but can be all the way up to four, which is pretty impressive. You're going to find the Italianate Victorian pretty much coast to coast, as when it was being built, it was quite common to have these little books called pattern books, um, which is kind of like old-fashioned Pinterest where you had a bunch of cool houses and you could sort of pick one to build. So because of that, you may find several very, very, very similar homes, miles and miles, if not states, apart, which I think is pretty nifty, because um, it used to be just like a localized architect would kind of dominate the area in that design, uh, but with the advancement of technology, this build style was available to pretty much everyone. And now through the power of YouTube and the internet is available to you guys too. I have a small child trying to climb on my lap, so let's just go ahead and get started. I am starting on a 20 by 30 in Willow Creek today, although this could technically be built on a 15 by 20. I started building here because I wanted to see if the Goths was more of like a uh, Gothic revival um, or possibly an Italianate, and I've decided that it is a breed all of its own, and maybe we should rebuild it, but not today. Go ahead and grab your little room tool, and we're going to start off with an 11 by 11 square. I did not do a very good job of centering that. And then you can just copy that and place it right on top. We are using medium wall heights today because one of the main architectural elements of the Italianate um, are going to be these friezes. Uh, we're actually going to be using this one and they only place on medium height walls, well, and tall walls, but that's just a little overkill. On your first floor, you're gonna go in four tiles from either side and just sort of divide like this. On this side, we're going to have a four by four little study, a little bathroom, and then this will be the kitchen. Count down five for the dining room, and this will be the main sort of parlor living room area. Stairs should fit right here. You can leave a couple of tiles open here for a door to the kitchen, um, which will walk across to the dining room and still access the bathroom right here. And then upstairs, we are going to do pretty much the exact same thing for bedrooms. Or we'll have a bedroom here, a bedroom here, a bathroom here. And then on this side, we can have a couple of slightly larger bedrooms. On the first floor, we're going to grab a little two by three flat rectangle, then copy this and place it directly above. At the back, we're going to take a flat square and place it one in from the side of the build and just pull it across until it's one in from over there. I'll explain why uh, when we roof. And then the whole build will be pulled up on a medium to high foundation. We can also add a wall right here to make a more formal sort of small entryway before we enter into the main hall that connects all of the rooms. And now let's talk about scalability and some of the key themes of the Italianate style. The base of your build is pretty much always going to be a square or a rectangle. The fancier ones will definitely have like some bay windows here and there. Where possible, you'll have your spaces opening room into room. However, since this is a bit smaller, it's going to be a lot easier to have the rooms all connect via a central hallway that will have the staircase in it, which is what we've done here today. Uh, kitchen will be at the back, as is the case with most Victorians. Bathrooms are gonna be kind of wherever you can put them, and having multiple living spaces is actually something the Italianate is, I'm not gonna say known for, because really what it's known for is more of these flat faces and the low, um, overhanging roof, which we'll get to in just a second, but having multiple living spaces with large windows looking out into nature was definitely a key piece of the Italian style and appeal. Pretty much all you're going to have on the first floor is going to be living spaces and then bedrooms will be on the second and possibly third and even fourth floors. I really love the generally boxy style of the Italian because it still carries so much um, prestige and just detail in all of the decorations, but at the core it's really a fairly simple construction, which I just think is really cool. Let's do the roof now because it is super easy. You're going to grab a hipped roof and just cover the entire square, pitch it all the way down, and then bring it up one or two. I'm going to go with two, and then also draw the eaves out too. Now when we add our freeze spirit, ignore those floating chairs, 
This will give it a really nice border at the top and these brackets appear to be supporting the roof and they line up really really well. If you look closely at the roof lines of most Italianate homes, that's pretty much what you're going to see. This could be roofed or not, I'm not going to because the floor plan I built this based off of didn't have it covered, but it does have a covered back deck. And here is why we are only pulling this um, to one tile from the edge instead of all the way. When we roof it and pull these eaves out, if we had this all the way to line up with the edge of the build, it would stick out weird. So we just have it there instead. That's all. And that is literally it for roofing. For siding, we could go with some nice horizontal siding or bricks. Now, the Italianate actually tended to be in more neutral and earthy tones from what I can see, as opposed to the Queen Anne stick and gingerbread um, homes, which generally had a lot of brighter colors. So something like this ornate brick in a nice muted brown could be absolutely lovely and really goes well with that white trim. A more multicolored brick could do fine. And of course, any number of siding options, wide or narrow. I'm kind of liking the green, so I think I'm going to stick with this. And they're just a nice, simple brick foundation. When I was looking for doors and windows, I noticed that there wasn't really anything that stood out as really capturing that Italianate style, which I was a little disappointed in. But on the plus side, that makes it easier to stick in the base game because there's like nothing perfect in any of the other packs either. So it works out. What I've decided to do is actually stick with the short height doors because this one, the arched door with double panes, most doors you're going to see are double front doors, but I didn't like any of the options. This one has double panes, which is very nice. And it has that classic column with sort of an inverted U above it um, that is really a very common shape, uh, as it were, in doors and windows in the Italian style. And then I'm just going to grab this freeze frame and place it just here. And we'll add a couple columns in a second as well, and that will really frame out that front door very nicely. I can place the same door up top. Now I do have move objects on. I don't think you need it on for this build, everything should work just fine, but if you ever notice something isn't placing properly, just hit Control shift c and type in bb.moveobjectson. For windows, I'm going to grab the angel wing just in white and place that symmetrically on either side. Symmetry isn't necessarily important in this build style, um, and then there's a smaller version of this window as well, but you do want to make sure that overall it feels balanced and you're going to have a lot of tall, narrow windows. Shutters aren't necessarily a thing for the Italianate style from what I could tell, but this window had the best shape and again it has a sort of upside down U that is so common. So it was pretty much either that or something that was just going to be way too plain Jane, and we don't really want that, so shutters it is. I'm going to place the rest of my windows from the inside since again symmetry isn't that important and I'm more concerned with it looking good from the inside. Across the way I will add tall windows the whole way. Think about like that should look just fine. And on the back as well. Alright, we have been joined with a mini guest so you may hear him uh, in a second. We'll see if he decides to sing or fall asleep. At the back door, I would like something nice, big, and open. Again, we don't really have a lot of great options um, in the base game for something that's going to meet that really ornate style, but we could go with this one. As it sort of matches the arches in the windows, it's a bit more plain, but it is a back door, so I think that's just fine. I'm going to add the shorter version of the window into the bathroom and kitchen, but I want the top of the window to still line up. So what I'm going to do is press F5 on my keyboard, and that's going to let me place it basically on quarter tiles, and that will let me place these up nice and high so that I can place counters below them. Upstairs we're going to use the short windows again because we have that freeze and using the tall windows just isn't going to look very good. And then I think I'm just going to have these window placements mimic the placements of the windows below them since the floor plan is literally identical. I could just about squeeze one window in on either side here. Although if I wanted to add a window in the middle here, I'd have to pick something smaller. Again, not really loving any of these options, but bay windows are actually fairly common in these um, build styles, either where you'd like bump the whole wall out or just use these little guys. So I suppose we can place one of those. Little Helper has nothing to say about that. To finish up decorating the outside of the build, we do need to grab a few columns. We're going to be using largely round columns, so the Mega Column or the Greco-Roman Column would be a good idea. If you hold Shift, you can place multiple columns at once without having to reselect. And I know it clips into the shutters a little bit, but I like how this frames the front door so well, and I could even change this out for a brick. I kind of like that. 
There we go, make it match the uh, foundation a bit. That's nice, that really brings your eye in. All right, we're gonna do that. Up here, I'm going to grab the stepped exterior trim. Wrought iron fences are a thing for the style. However, if you watched yesterday's video, you know how angry I am at the very, very limited options we have for wrought iron fences. I'm going to use this one today here. Of course it replaces the foundation, because why wouldn't it? And place this on the back as well, where it doesn't replace the foundation, because why would it? Finish this off with some nice wide steps. I think I'm going to try and match up the brick. And I'm just going to use this same wallpaper to try to blend it in a little better, because that is a lot of bricks. We do have a matching floor paint though that we can use right there, as well as on the back. We can place these same stairs on either side of our deck back here. You could also have the stairs coming off in front of the door, um, whatever makes the most sense for your build. Let's grab these columns and place some along our back porch here. We can have our columns evenly placed every three tiles on the back here, plus on the sides. And if we wanted to add a spandrel, we could totally do that as well. Little Helper has officially passed out. For roof trim, uh, anything that will give it a nice border will be fine. Again, the square roof trim is always my favorite, but it's just a little too modern for the style we're going for here, so we're going to do beveled out instead. And just switch out my shingle for something a little bit darker. Um, I like this one. I just generally recommend switching out from the base game shingle. For whatever reason, it just always makes your build look better. Prove me wrong. But it's kind of like switching out from the concrete and drywall, you know? Like you just, you need to add a little personality to really make it your own. I think this is coming together pretty well, and honestly it's blending into the neighborhood pretty decently as well. Just like with the Queen Anne, inside you connect rooms with arches or double doors. This keystone arch would work pretty well. And these are kind of my go-to double doors um, for base game builds because they're the best windowed option we have. And y'all know how I feel about windowed doors. I'll be placing these into all of the other rooms. This door has that same arch that we've been carrying through the rest of the build, so I'm going to place that going into the bathroom. And then for floors, um, whatever makes your little heart happy. Around the stairs, you could add either the same fence we had outside, or some little half walls. And of course this doesn't have a matching railing, so I'm just going to grab uh, just one of these plain ones. As far as painting the interior walls go, just like on the outside, um, we're going to go with a lot of more neutral tones. This makes it look old. This makes it look much more new. Another way to help your builds feel more modern is to start opening up the floor plan a bit. This can be done with arches or by adding spandrels between the rooms. It appears that most of the fireplaces are placed more on the interior walls, which means your chimney wouldn't quite be in the middle and it wouldn't quite be on the edge, it'd be somewhere in between. Since we have a lot of gray brick, probably we'll add a gray brick chimney for this one though, it's much cuter. Kitchen is going to be at the back of the build and then from there just whatever fits. If your budget allows, I always recommend going with wooden cabinets for older style homes. If you're looking to place custom counter pieces, what you have to do is select this little button right here and turn it off. And then when you click on your color swatches, you'll notice these little gears here, which you can just click here as well. And then you can place any counter piece you want. So I could actually start with an end piece and then go through and place the exact pieces I want. Just like you can place custom counter pieces, you can also place custom cabinets, which is great. I like to do this to make little built-in cabinets around my refrigerator, especially for older style builds like this. Placing a half cabinet above the oven lets you place a little uh, vent a little bit more easily without breaking up your cabinet line. And I like using the end caps even if I'm just going to go straight into a wall, just to break up that monotonous solid front uh, cabinet look. Because this house has four bedrooms and two bathrooms, I am going to make most of these a full bath. This one, I will add a bathtub, a little sink, and a toilet. None of the mirrors, again, are really screaming Italian, so I'm just going to pick a kind of fancy one. And since it's the same floor plan, I should be able to just copy this room and place it right up top. I will have to delete a couple of my windows uh, and doors since they placed on top of each other, but that's one really easy way to move uh, multiple bathrooms around. Oh shoot, and this thing. Well, anyway, I promise it's still easier. There we go. Before we move on to landscaping, if you haven't already, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel. It's great. I'm having a great time. You're having a great time. We're building cute houses, learning a little bit more about the architectural styles all around us. Also, I'd really, really, really like to hit 500 by the end of the month. I know that that's a really big goal, and I'm doing everything I can on my end to hit that, and it would 
help us out if you could help us uh, hit that as well. So liking the video and subscribing, commenting, heck, even sharing it, um, especially since we're about to have a huge influx of new builders with the base game being free soon. All of that will really help this little channel grow, so if you think these tutorials are worth sharing, it would really mean a lot to me and my family. We've we're all super excited with how all this channel is doing. Um, this is something that I've dreamed of being able to do for a really long time. So thank you to all 418, I think at this point of you who have subscribed, absolutely blows my mind. So thank you from the bottom of my little building heart. And with that being said, let's just finish this up with some lovely landscaping and then we can get little man here to bed. He was already in bed, but now he's back. Funny how that works, huh? The inhabitants of the Italianate style really, really did want to sort of feel at one with the nature as opposed to some of the other more ornate Victorian um, styles. So landscaping was kept very natural and organic feeling, um, highlighting a lot of the local beauty. We do have these giant fern looking things uh, in the world, so I'll probably grab some of those as well as some hedges. If you had a side that you wanted some more privacy on, these upright cypress trees would make really great sort of tall hedges. Ah, the low-lying palm plant. That's what we're working with. Although for up close to the house, I do like this one quite a bit. When your foundation is this tall, you can really put the hedges right up against the house and it won't actually clip in, which is fantastic. And for time's sake, I will be focusing just on the front yard, uh, but this same landscape will carry throughout the build. Of course, the backyard is a great place for anything else your sims may need, like, you know, a rocket ship or a giant telescope, but front yard is mostly going to focus on aesthetics. Let's go ahead and finish our front path here, and then we can fill in this area with some of our local plants. I'm going to start with placing a handful of these low-lying palm plants to sort of give a general boundary of the area I want to fill. I'm going to grab a couple of rocks as well, which you can size up using the bracket keys. Not a ton, just enough to give it a little bit of uh, structure and additional texture. All right, looks like we have some dull daisies in the world around us, so that will work pretty well for some low-lying filler. I think this bush and this bush are supposed to be the same, but I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. Get some flowering hedges in there. I'd like to add a small tree. I'm trying to pick one from the world. This one should work, the uh, hawthorn tree. And now for any of the large gaps I have left, I'm just going to grab some low-lying pale yellow flowers. They are my favorite filler flower. Sizing up and down some of your plants can really add some height variety, which is good. And then from here, you just need to finish it off with some terrain paint. As usual, I'll be going with smarter, smarter starter soil and just giving everything a good strong border. This includes under my foundation, and if I had any other sort of structures in the yard, like a bird bath or a swing set, I would put some terrain paint under that as well. Think of it like an extra outline. You know like how stickers sort of have that extra outline around it? It's kind of what this is. And that's the landscaping done. Let's do a little recap. The main base of your build is going to be either a square or a rectangle. We ended up with a square today, but it wouldn't be uncommon for, say, part of the build to sort of stick out a little bit in one area or another, or even to have some bay windows like we did on the Queen Anne. However, it's not really necessary for this style, and I wanted to do at least one uh, base game and beginner-friendly Victorian, so decided to skip that for this one. If you want to see more fancy examples, I have loads on my Pinterest board, which is of course linked in the description of this video. Bedrooms will be upstairs. This build is two stories, which is pretty much the smallest it's going to get, although it can get up to four, which is super cool. If you'd like to see me build a larger, more ornate version, I would really, really love to in the future, so let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in. Porches are mostly isolated to the first floor. It's not super common to have porches off the second and above stories. Um, if you do, though, they'll be quite small and may or may not be covered. Windows will be quite tall and narrow and have a fairly ornate frame. Again, shutters aren't really necessary with this style. Uh, it was just the best window option I had. Front doors tend to be double doors, um, but again, I liked the double pane and look of this one with the curve at the top to match the windows. Definitely want freezes wherever you can under your roof or at the very least some corbels. If you want to modernize this build, basically just take away some of the more ornate things. You may want to simplify your freezes, replace your windows with something a little more generic, open, or even straight up modern. Simplify some of your columns and railings. And at the end of the day, just have fun with it. This is The Sims 4. There really aren't any rules. And that is what I have for you guys today. 
I know I'm a little biased and I already built this once, but I'm honestly really pleased with how cute this literal square of a build turned out. I keep saying, as long as it has a good roof, even a square can be good, and I think that this is, well, not really living proof. It's a house made out of pixels, but eh, you get my point. Again, if you haven't already, it would mean the world to me if you would join our subscribers. If I can hit 500 by the end of the month, not only will I continue this series in January, but I'll be able to make community posts, which is super cool. Um, I'll be able to get more direct feedback from you guys, do polls, post funny sims memes, all that sort of stuff, and I would love to be able to do that. So that's another big reason I have the 500 subscriber goal. If you like this house, you're going to love the rest of this series, which is of course in the top card here. And check out this bottom card for a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks so much for building with us today, and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!